On today's episode, we kind of go back to a very fun favorite segment of the show as we get to do our second edition of Wolves Weekly. And I'm going to tell you guys so much. The special guest today is going to be really fun. And we're going to the tippy top of what you call <laughs> the A team. <laughs> Your Locked On Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricane, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Locked On Hurricanes, or should I say a Wolves Wednesday edition of Locked On Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you to the every day for making this your first list of the day, five days a week, Monday through Friday, talking everything about your Carolina Hurricanes, and also your Chicago Wolves. I'm your host, Zach Martin. I'm the Carolina Hurricanes beat writer over at the Hawkers. I'm also going to do a Wolves weekly column that's talking about everything about the Chicago Wolves. They'll start here in a couple weeks when we get closer to the season. Also the co-host of the Search Cast. And, of course, I have all my dudes here at Locked on Hurricanes. But, I mean, let's be honest. No one's here to listen to me talk. They're here for our special guest, and I am super excited to have her on. She is turned going into her 29th season with the Chicago Wolves. She's the president of the operations, and I mean the resume alone should speak for the, <laughs> speak for itself. Started with the team community, uh, community relations in 1996, leadership role in 97, game operations in 2000, director of operations in 2004, vice president of operations in 2010, but wait, there's more. How about the AHL's Ken McKenzie Award of 2009 for outstanding promotion of the team and also for the fact that you got the really great endeavors of Read to Succeed, Adopt a Dog Program, and raised over $6 million in Chicago Wolves charities. And, I mean, her, the, my guests and her staff have been honored with the AHL Community Service Award for community relations in the 2011-2012 season and 19-20. And, and in 2012-13, she was – and her team were earned the HL Award for providing the most outstanding fan experience in the Western Conference. And also, the University of Wisconsin zone, Courtney Mahoney <laughs> joins the podcast. Courtney, thank you so much for talking to me. And how are you doing on this uh, Tuesday? I'm doing great. The With an intro like that, I feel great. <laughs> it's fantastic. So thanks hey, for hey, having me. Hey, no, hey, I know a lot of Chicago Wolves fans are super hyped about this episode. So I had to make sure I got to roll out the right carpet and be like, hey, we got Madam President of the Chicago Wolves <laughs> coming on. Got to do the justice. For I love it. I appreciate that. We have the best fans in the world. So very, shout out very to Travis and his crew. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Travis, Maddie, everyone. Like there is so many great Chicago Wolves fans, and you know, big shout to you know, Andrew Rinaldi and Lynn Sheroff, mm -hmm. who also do a really good job covering the Wolves too. And so there's a really great core of fans and writers and stuff like that. I'm just happy to just be part of the writing crew. That's going to be doing a little bit more talk about the Chicago Wolves. But I mean, for you though, 29 seasons with Chicago Wolves, congratulations almost Thank to that you. number 30. <laughs> can, you cannot go wrong with that. Like if I would love to be well, somewhere for almost 30 years, because that means that's just the, the core and just the growth that you've probably seen for the Chicago Wolves oh, going from absolutely. IHL to the AHL. Like, what's that experience been like just seeing that growth over the last 29 years since you started? I mean, I think first and foremost, it's a credit to Don Levin. The, the reason, it, like, you stay at an organization, there's so many of us that have been here for so long and the way he he runs his business. And especially for me, his dedication to the community and quite honestly, his dedication to winning. I mean, that started... I was so lucky. I started in 96, 97, and then we won, you know, we won like three cups in five, six years or something. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. And that's just, that was the evolution. And it was, it was a different time from the IHL to the AHL, but oh, yeah. his passion for winning never stops. So the expectation, and then we, you know, we were fortunate to win two more cups after that. So it's been, it's been such a ride, but it's great. And it's, it's funny, like IHL days, I had Ted Drury on the team and Jack was just a little baby. And oh then, my gosh. you know, you come back to a couple of years ago, I'm like, I remember you in the, running around the wise room. And, <laughs> uh, such a wonderful human. But it's that's kind of the crazy part. Now you're starting having kids of guys that used to play for us. And that makes you feel 
good but old. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And if you move over to Chicago Blackhawks, the Chicago Wolves were the first to do the three and six. So I mean, you, you guys aren't that special. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's crazy when you go back to the IHF days and people are like, the AHL is tough. I'm like, no, man, go the go the IHL. That was a whole different beast. And you're talking like the Cleveland Lumberjacks. That used to be a team back in the day. So it's oh, like, yeah. what like what have you seen that's been part of that transition from going from those IHF days to the AHL and just seeing just the, the growth of people caring about more about minor league hockey and just the fact that it's, you know, how it's become a really high-end developmental league just in its yeah, own Yeah, I mean, the game's changed, right? So when we first started, it was really guys – you know, Wendell Young, obviously, who like embodies what the Wolves organization is about, but guys that have kind of spent most of their years in the NHL. And then he built like what I would feel like Don used to build these like super teams and they played, they still wanted to play. They still had the skill set, but they just so much wanted to play for this organization. And, and I think whatever organization they were in and the passion, the camaraderie and lots of kids, like it, that was just, I think the difference. And the been there, seen that, and everybody had experienced so much. So they brought that to the team and to what helped our organization grow, how well they treated fans. Like if you ask our fans, they, you know, they're certainly passionate about our, our guys now, but they still love the, you know, obviously Wendell's love, but all those guys from the past, the Dan Snyder oh, yeah. and Breslin's, but the Ben Simons and the whomever who was, it was a crossover, but it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. And then now they, the difference is I feel like guys come here. I'm like, all right, let's get a driver's license or let's set up your bank account and <laughs> you're kind of getting them going. But then you're like a proud parent when you see them find success, like the Vegas team in St. Louis when all those guys won a Stanley cup uh, you've seen their growth and their hard work and, and pay for it. And even j just, it's just, yeah, it's kind of fascinating. And it is a, a different game as they kind of learn the game. Or as I feel like in the IHL was like, they knew, they just knew, but everybody in the league knew what they were doing too. So it, it's, it's yeah. been interesting. Yeah, no, I can totally imagine. So, so for people who don't really know, because everyone knows kind of like the hockey operations side of things, and maybe some people don't know what the president of operations for the business side. Like, so what does go into that whole aspect of like, okay, you're the president of operations and you have all these hats going on. Like, what's that experience like for you running that side of things that maybe people don't know about? Yeah, we are lucky. John Sata is our president of business operations. So he manages tickets and partnership sales. So we work really closely together, but to have that divide is shared, I guess, shared responsibilities in a way is, is really good because he's so knowledgeable of that side. But for me, I manage, I think it's like five departments. It's like everything else, but tickets and partnerships. So right. <laughs> everything from obviously community relations, game day operations. I manage our creative department, our TV department, merchandise, our VP of operations. Dan Harris is all the heavy lifting on that, but just everything that goes into that. So literally our job is to, I mean, it, it it's nonstop. It's everything from hanging. I mean, I'm setting up dog cages on a Saturday uh, right. for adopt a dog. We hang the dashers, but then it's also what's the opening show going to look like? Uh, how are we going to raise more money this year? How can I get more dogs adopted? So it's like, it's just kind of all over the place, but then also, Hey, the sponsor came on board. How do we implement that? How do we make that the best for the sponsor and for the fans? Right. Uh, how do we make tickets is working so hard to sell the tickets. How do I make sure they have the, the you know the best experience once they walk into that building? So uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of I would kind of say the it's a grinder. We're like grinders. We're the heavy lifting of the team. Right. Um, yeah. You know, doing our best to make sure that work that salespeople have done carries over. Yeah. No. In a I'm, nutshell, it's weird. It's funny. Like creative is always my favorite because. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. And I just kind of help manage the efficiencies and what they need. But I'm like, I don't know how you can make it go. But uh, our creative director, Imran Javed, is awesome. So he he does that as well. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. how do you guys do those transitions in those videos of the, of the Big Bad Wolf yeah. from the cartoons, the transitions? <laughs> yeah. Of the, yeah the, the schedule release was just so great. It was just like, Let's just like lean into the big bad wolves just a little. Yeah, so, we're tough. Let's get our swagger back. 
<laughs> oh, definitely for sure. I, I know everyone in the in the area, the fans, and of course, you know, all the Hurricanes fans who want to see the prospects do well. Like everyone wants to see. I mean, it's weird not seeing the Wolves in the Calder Cup playoffs because you're kind of just like, oh yeah, it's this, it's Chicago. They're going to be there. That's just and what we like, do, <laughs> right? It, it's like kind of it's like one of those things where it's like, okay, death taxes. Oh, look, it's the Chicago Wolves in the some round of the playoffs because that's just how it is. But so. I guess you got a lot going on. And, and the thing is, like, minor league hockey, because I've, you know, like an intern for baseball, I would love to have done hockey at the time. But I know what you guys do is so much because it's not the whole big, huge operation that you see the NHL teams do. So you guys have to manage with smaller crews and having to mul- do wear multiple multiple hats. Like, so how do you guys manage just to be able to pull all the stuff off? Like I say, even on a game day where it's like, okay, we got a game at seven, like, like what's that day in the life like okay we gotta get here and this 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 and this and then yeah. boom go, go time for us i think the one thing about our team is that we are run like a major league team the expectations are to be a major league team i think that you know the the open uh the fact that we broadcast our games the fact mm-hmm. that we have an in-house like we do all of our own creative and and what have you so the expectations are to do all that and I mean, it's a, it's a long Saturday. I try to pride myself on being the first person and the last person at the rink, but I think it's, it's just attention to detail. That's what a game day turns into. You've written your script, Mm -hmm. you've built all your, your videos or your board, you know, depending on what kind of game night is, whether it's a theme night or what have you, um, you know, all your, the videos, the boards, the rings, all of that is built. The breakaway yeah. is ready to be handed out and yeah. double checked with everybody. And the tables are here and this and that. <laughs> You're staff right. and you hope people show up. But yeah, I think it's a lot. It's, it's, I would say like Dan and I, who's my VP, are just, you know, we get there, we change all the, you know, we update the dashers, we change the dashers, we make sure the tables are good. I, you know, you set up the dog cages, you set up the, um, I think it's important too, like for our staff and our younger staff to see us doing that. I, I think I've never asked somebody to do something I haven't done. So right. I think it's important that they also didn't sign up for this to necessarily put posters up. So I want them to learn. I want them to grow. So it, we kind of take on that responsibility, but probably right. a little bit of control issues. So we just <laughs> want it done. And then you kind of work with perfect. Them. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Very many control issues, but, and then you're kind of building. So by the time you usually have pregames too, like they've sold, you know, youth hockey pregames, but then it's like, once the game comes, I've already emailed like Chris about this. Chris has the script to be yeah. who you had the, the fortune of, of chatting with. He so was great. Amazing. Such, but, such a great guy. Such a great guy. So you're kind of at the point come by five, you know, four, four, five, you eat with the staff, make sure everybody's ready to go. The building should be ready to go. You check in with everybody. And then by, you know, doors opening, a team is locked in and hopefully everybody else is. So, and it's crazy. I mean, it's just, you got, 30 dogs in the lobby hoping to get adopted. You got right. a tunnel. We're the only team on the that I know of that has one entrance to the ice. And I think people don't realize how challenging that is. It's, yeah, yeah, especially when tempers start flaring up too. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's that's but always you've got like two Zambonis, a fanboni, a Kia car, you have all the the bits and pieces for the show. Right, so yeah. Dan does a good job coordinating that. But it yeah, and there's many a story, many oh. a story of crossing uh <laughs> company parking lines down in the tunnel. Yeah, just a little bit. Well actually talking about the A team, it's a great segment. So make sure everyone to stick around for segment two as we get to dive into the a team that Chris did bring up in our first Wolves Wolves Wednesday. So I'm excited to talk about that with Courtney here in a second on a Wednesday, Wolves Wednesday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. All right, we have to talk about Game Time, and Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for you, your favorite live event, even easier. And with the Game Time Picks, it filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. The one thing that I really like about the fact is you can find your tickets pretty easy through that Game Time Picks, their seat viewfinder, which actually gives you the opportunity to see what your seats look like before you even buy the ticket itself. And with that, in their game type picks, it curates to make it easier to save more on sports, along with concerts, comedy, stairs, and so much more. So maybe if you're not into sports, but you do want to go see a comedy show or a movie, they are able to do that for you too. 
And then we go and do the all-in pricing. Make sure you toggle that feature on so that way you get the tickets total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And remember what I said about the seat viewfinder? They have a panoramic view feature in their app so you can check out your seat before you even buy the tickets. So no obstructive views, no weird angles, no stuff like that. You'll know what you're looking at before you even get to the event itself. Because really, you want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets. And with Game Time, they really do that for you. You can't take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. So make sure to download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKDOWNHL. That's L O C K E D. ON NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Well, what time is it? Game time. Welcome back to a segment two of Locked On Hurricanes, your team every day. And uh, I think at the end of the first segment, Courtney made a nice little segue that we have to go talk about, and that is the A team. And if everyone remembers the first Wolves Wednesday we did with Chris DeVille, he even mentions how amazing the A team is with just the opening night. You know, pyrotechnics, the music, just the all around atmosphere of Allstate Arena, which, I mean, if you're talking top five, top three, if Allstate's not in there, I don't know what you're kind of, what, what experience have you been seeing? Courtney, what makes your A team essentially the A team of the A teams? Uh, uh, let, let's be real here. Like, God, the best, the best. Uh, honestly, I think we have a lot of fun. I think it's, Everybody takes their job very seriously and what their responsibilities are. I think there's a mutual respect for what we're all trying to do. Um, it's it's for me. I'm also on headset. I have a producer, James, that helps call the cameras and does. He's trapped in a room, and and the reliability of him and our camera guys that help capture the great shot. They are unbelievable at what they do, but. Uh, it's I thought I have two radios and you're doing everything and to have Chris, Dave and Dave um, just be on point for everything. And they can read it. We've now worked with each other for so long. We know each other's emotions. We like, I can just, I stomp a foot on occasion and Chris knows like that, but <laughs> right. you know, I, I, I think it's that. And like Chris and I talk a lot. Um, we're very, he does a ton of research. He's so respectful of the job. And I think uh, that part is key. And I think with Dave and Dave, uh, which was strictly effects, who is our pyro, they're amazing. We're lucky to have them. They're doing Coldplay and CMAs and the yeah. killers. So, uh, but yeah, we have a lot of fun. I mean, I think that's the, the the gig of this job: like work hard, do really well, but have fun. And we laugh a lot. And you know, you know each other. Spending three hours a night for the past you know, so many years and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's been a blast. They're all, and they're all really good guys. You know, about their families, their girlfriends and the what, you know, Chris got engaged. So it's cute. It's a really neat thing. And it makes you excited about going to work every day. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. Big congratulations to Chris on his uh, recent <laughs> engagement. Very awesome. But yeah, it, it, from like, just from the videos that you see from the fans, just the overall atmosphere and even like games, if you're watching on AHL TV, which is on Flow Sports, I do want to get your thoughts on that because I know that's kind of a new thing that just happened. But like, what makes like what makes Allstate Arena like the go-to place for fans to go and experience minor league hockey that is unprecedented? I would say it's like you don't really see that very much. Like, what makes Allstate the place? Yeah, and I think that again, it kind of goes back to Don Levin that he he is so dedicated that each and every game he's going to do a massive pyro laser show that some teams might do for opening just for opening night or just for right, a banner yeah. ceremony. So each and every night, you are going to have this amazing, detailed, ridiculous firework show, yeah. and, and and I think that kind of like sets the tone. And I think for us. The hockey's going to be great. The guys are grinding. They're they're such hockey guys are such good guys, and I think that oh, yeah. at some point like leads to the community. But like how they, how much they care about everything. They care about the on ice and they care about the off ice. So I think that builds this relationship with our fans. And we have this group of fans that you have such diehard fans, which are amazing. Oh, yeah. And you try oh, to yeah. also, as I build my game. You know, have a lot of new fans, a lot of, we do great in group sales, but you try to give a, a few, like, you know, like it's always stop the rock when third period starts. So your thought is if 
someone's walking around the concourse, they know what's up. You have a goal song that, oh, I just, you know, that means this person scored. So right. you kind of do some things consistently so they know, but then you also, you want to make sure, you know, I work really hard on the music, especially if it's a back-to-back -back games that we're not repeating things. You want right. to kind of get a gauge on what people like and don't like. And then as we do, as you build the show, it's, it's serious. The hockey is serious. The goal is obviously winning, but then it's like, I want you to have fun. Whether you like hockey or not, I guarantee you're going to have a blast at our games. So I think that's kind of what, you know, in the concourse there's stuff going on. I think the games are Wolfpack. Everybody does such a nice job and it's cool. Like, you know, you win a game and you all of a sudden Dom Franco's throwing you a t-shirt or it, it, there's, I mean, that's, it's just, and they walk out, you can get their autograph. It's just, I think it's really special and it's something you don't see in professional sports. No, you really don't. Even too, I think that one of the big things that's kind of grown over the last few years is like social media presence for a team. Like if you have like a good social media presence where like the admins are kind of interacting with fans. Yeah. I mean, there's one thing that like to drop videos and drop cool things, but it's like, if you're just kind of just posting, we aren't really interacting. I think you're kind of losing an element. And I think the wolves, it's like the wolves and the hurricanes have found a way like to do it in their own individual style, but also make it to be like, yeah, we're going to be interactive with fans. Like, what does that say about being able to use social media as a way to draw more fans in? That even if you're not even in Chicago to see the team, what does that incorporate of just being able to draw more in with a great interactive social media team? Yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, we just hired a new social media coordinator, Abby Edel, who's done a really tremendous job. And oh, yeah, I she's think, she's already great, 100%. Yeah, yeah, and I think you could drastically see – and I think it's this balance too, right? When you're <laughs> my age in hurry and understanding, but the goals, which he understands the sport and just has a good read on what the folks want to see and what we're posting and when we're posting and creating that access to, I mean, that's what everybody wants, creating the access to these guys that you don't normally get. What is, you see the interviews and you see the this, but can we see them being silly and fun or can we just see what's important to them? And I, I think she's, created a tone that's uh, I look forward to that, you know, continuing to grow throughout the, the, the season as you get, you know, there's some guys that are back that we know really well. And then it's, it's the fun part of getting to know the personalities. I mean, I've been doing this for so long. It's every year is new. It's, I mean, and it's like, sometimes you have guys, you know, you know what you're going to do with the Brett Sterling or this, but it's the new guys and it's like new fun personalities and what do they like and what's important to them and how do we shine a light on that, whether it's causes or this or that. So I think that's kind of the exciting part of the start of a new season. Yeah, of course, you got Jason coming back for his 16th season in the booth, too, which is very awesome to see. I mean, you know, you're talking about like voices of voices. Like, that's kind of the one you want to have for the Chicago Wolves. For that tag team between he and Gardner, they do a tremendous job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Well, speaking of that, because I know it used to be AHL TV was its own thing. Now it's going to Flow Sports, and I would have to assume probably maybe not a lot of changes in terms of that aspect, but, like, what are you guys – like, I know there's probably a lot of talks. But like, what's going into all – like, is anything changing in terms of the broadcast style, or is it just kind of you're having to send it to someone else rather than the AHL by itself? Now it's a here's Flow Sports, Flow Hockey kind of doing their thing. Like, what's that like going I mean, I think that? for us, we have always – treated our game i mean we've always, we've also broadcast on tv so right. um i think we've always treated it with such a respect and you know we want to show we want to grow the we want to grow hockey we want to grow the wolves so the opportunity for the most amount of people to see it and i want people to see what we're invested in this is what the wolves are doing and and i think there's a lot of hl teams that are doing a great job but let's get to that we're all at the same level so it's there's no, there's a less of a distinction. I mean, I think the experience at our game and Blackhawk games are very, are different. It doesn't mean one's better than the other, but right. better. But like it, it's a different <laughs> experience. So I think right. it's like as we grow and expose that, and I think Flow Sports also gives us that opportunity for more people to see it and be like, oh, I want to check that out. I'm going to come to Chicago, see a game, see these guys, and see. Like I said, it's a win-win. Like you're going to have a blast hot. You know, if you love hockey, you're going to love it. If you don't love hockey, you're still going to love it. And I think you're going to fall in love with the sport. I think if, if you get people to see it live, they will fall in love with the sport. And I, I think the growth of that is tremendous. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And it also helps too. Now you don't have to have like three different, four different streaming services to get ECHL, USHL, you know, AHL. Cause now you, now you get to see, Oh, look, there's Chicago steel one night and I can go watch the walls another night yeah. all on, one app and it works out perfectly and you got college and juniors and all that too so 
definitely I think Flow Hockey's kind of put itself into a spot where it's like we pretty much got everyone outside yeah. of the NHL. So nothing wrong with that. So but everyone, you need to stick around here because we are going to talk about some community efforts that the Chicago Wolves have done, especially with Courtney and what her team has done. Because you heard all the awards. Now we get to talk about the actual great things that they have done that has raised over $6 million under her you know, tenure, her reign of being the Madam President of your <laughs> Chicago Wolves. So stick around here as we'll talk about that in a second on a Wolves Wednesday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. You've heard us talking about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's Number one, Sportsbook. Welcome back to a segment three of Locked on Hurricanes, your team every day. So I know at the end we talked about how we're going to go over some very amazing programs. And I know Courtney's kind of mentioned some already, but you know we're going to dive into them a little bit more. So I know on opening night, which is October 12th against the Milwaukee Admiral, you guys are doing Adopt a Dog Night, Adopt a Dog Program, like What's been so successful with that one? Because I know that's kind of like been your guys' mainstay for such a long time. What does it mean to be able to do that as you're like, you're, all right, kick off to the season. Here we go. We got to do this one. It's amazing. And it's insane. People come to games and adopt a dog. And that is like epitome of why our fans are so, I mean, so amazing. Uh, this program has been around we have almost 1800 dogs adopted. And then we partner with, uh, we have, three charities, uh, Border Tales Rescue, Right Way Rescue, and Anderson Humane, and especially Border Tales and Right Way, they've just done a tremendous job of bringing these dogs that have needed homes. And it's, it's awesome. Like it's, you talk about Jason Shaver, he's adopted three dogs. Our blimp guy, so Steve awesome. Loris has adopted a bunch of dogs. We've had players that my favorite thing is when players come up the stairs after their game and are their wife has adopted a dog and <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, I know you just played a game, but here's like, here's your new surprise, dog. <laughs> but no, it's great. And it's these, our fans that are coming to the game. They had, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a stigma. I'm like, Hey, they adopt a dog and then people return them and our fans, they welcome it. I think folks now have started to look forward to this. Like, Hey, if you're thinking about getting a dog, come by and, and this is such a great forum to do it. And they, right just embrace it in the amount of times they've adopted one and then they'll adopt another. And I, I think it's just a, a tribute to them and the passions that they share with us. I think that's, you know, one of the things as you go through this for many years, like what's important to, we had a, a lady last year who had mentioned, we had done the mental health awareness jerseys, which we were super proud of. And she mentioned something about, I think she had lost a family member to, you know, Alzheimer's or dementia. And then I had some people really close to me deal with dementia awareness. And then the opportunity to be like, Hey, this resonates with folks, too many folks. How do we do that and raise awareness and raise funds? And I think listening to our fans and, and working with them too, uh, it's amazing. And uh, Don Levin, you know, adopt the dog was his baby. He, he started it and I'm so proud of how much we've grown it. I, I this year, especially, we're actually going to be wearing animal adoption awareness jerseys in January oh, to nice. help raise money. So I, I, I think it's one of those two of hey, if you don't have the ability to adopt a dog, can you donate? Can you volunteer at games? Like gives people different opportunities to do anything. But no, it's amazing. It's 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 just okay. when people. It's like I'm like no, you don't just bring your dog to the game. You leave with a dog. So, but yeah. it's awesome. Like. The crowds, it's just so cool. It makes, it's a reminder too of the way you feel, whether you win that game or not, when we sort out, hey, 24 to 25 dogs got adopted, like That's no awesome. better feel, like no better feeling. And even honestly, if you have a slow, I mean, you know, knock on wood, we don't have that, but just one or two dog got it, get dogs gets adopted. Still, you, you changed, you changed that person's life because they're going to be better for it. Yeah. And having that dog, it's just it's such a privilege to be in a position to, to change people's lives and these dogs lives. So it's, it's, it's really an amazing, inspiring program. No, it really is too. And, and even though I, like a lot of people who talk about this, I've heard from other, a lot of people too, going the read to succeed. That's kind of always been a big staple for you guys as well. And I mean, 
I'm a big pro. I have a whole entire bookcase like back here, just crammed full of books, and I've been reading since I've been a kid. So like, what is like, what does that say about the Chicago Wolves kind of being like? We really want to push, help kids read and stuff like that. Like, what's that incentive been like for you guys, just being able to do read to succeed and how popular it's been? It's really neat, and I think there's a couple components to it. I think the goal initially we had just started with just the libraries, and we wanted people to realize. You know, there's two parts. A, the the value and the resources a library has. It's one of the most magical places. And then also that, you know, to set a goal and achieve a goal, it's not just about, hey, you read 15 books this week, but maybe you weren't reading and now you read 10 minutes a day. So you have the opportunity to win tickets and pucks and what have you. So I, I think and it's grown and now it's to the schools. There's over, you know, almost 100,000 kids each year involved in the programs and actually 300,000 and then to have the players come out and we make sure that messaging is, you know, and Stevie Martins was here and he is a Harvard, you know, he talked about the importance of school, but it's no different than maybe Don Fensori, who's amazing. And he, he did just interact so well, just to talk about the role that as a professional athlete reading plays in his life that, it's, you know, he's reading on the road, he's reading on bus trips, or he's doing his mentally, you know, it ties into the mental awareness too of making sure you're as mentally strong as you are physically strong and the mental breaks you need. If, if you're having a bad day, hey, maybe go read a book or take a break and, and making sure you're treating your body and your mind really well. So the program has, you know, similar to everything else, certainly has grown tremendously since we started it. But again, it was one of those things when if somebody comes up to you like, my kid wasn't reading, but then, you know, we saw Dominic Fensori at the library and now he reads or the school, like, it's just like great day at the office. And it's right. And you get those letters <laughs> and it's awesome. Like that's, that's as why the best job in the world, like to, to have that impact and the, to meet these players too. It's again, this really cool program where guys are going out to libraries or going out to schools, talking about the hockey, but then it's like, what's your favorite book or what are you doing to help decompress from a game? Why it's okay to you fall on the ice. Yeah. I fall. I get back up. You do it again. So I think that part is it, the messaging is amazing and we're, we're really, really proud of it. No, that's really awesome. And another one I really got to talk about too, that I thought was that really cool that you guys do. It's the wolves wish, which that is something that that's really awesome. The fact that you're being able to just help people and stuff like they're kind of like going through adversity, like, What's that been like, just being able to, you know, do something like Wolf's Wish, just kind of being able to help families and stuff like that in different ways? I mean, it's a privilege, right? Like, I think that the goal for all of our, you know, endeavors is is a, a, really like, how do we make you feel better? How can we, you're having a bad day, how, how do we help with that? And I think sometimes with Wolf's Wish, there's, ah, if there's a, a you know, a child going through cancer, you also want to look after the second child that may not be getting as much attention. And if there's, if we can spend one day where maybe they don't think about it and they feel lucky, then that's what we want to do. So I think we've, the, the things we might take for granted of, how to, you know, being behind the scenes and seeing the rink is inspiring to others. And I think that's kind of what we try to do. And you know, another, you know, Dom Franco do, has done a really nice job. We started it last year when he was here of just looking after folks that were in the military and the chance to meet with him after a game and just chat with him and come to the game and let, let us be, let us honor you. Let us do something right. for you for everything you've done for our country and our service. And I think anybody that's going through a hard time, if we can help make you feel better, we will do our best to, to do whatever we can. And I, I think that's really important. I think it's the beauty of sports. I think, you know, when I wanted to get into sports, especially community, it was like you have this audience, right? Every right. game you have an audience. So we can either fundraise or, you know, somebody comes out and just to honor them. And it's, I, I do, I think it's such a privilege to do that. And if you can make a difference and Somebody feels better after that game, whether it's just they had a good time, they bonded with someone, you came, you felt special. That That's, you know, to me, just as important as winning championships. No, 100%. And, that, and that's really something I think for the Chicago Wolves, like you guys have all the success on the ice, you know, five, you know, five championships, you know, and of course, everyone knows the the famous photo of you holding the Calder trophy, which is super awesome. But like you guys also had like success off the ice too. And like, 
was it? I because I know it's like you know it's it's you, but it's also your staff. Like you know when we were going over the you know awards earlier, what does it speak to what you guys have done to be able to get recognized by the AHL for not just one season but multiple seasons of being one of the components of giving back and helping out in communities and stuff like that? Was it say when you guys are like, all right, here's your award from the AHL for doing this for the communities and all the incentives that you do? Yeah, I think it's you know the one cat, you know, it's like, we always want to be better. We always want to be doing our best. It's how, how can we improve? How can we raise more money? How do I get more dogs adopted? So I think we spend a lot of time, you know, you spend time in the off season evaluating and it, as much as it's the awards are really cool, but I think quite honestly, the feedback from our fans and how the impact that these programs mean to them, the, the person, Hey, I got a survivor stick or I did this, that's that we're like, okay, how do I do more? How do we get? And we have our team, the whole organization top to bottom with the wolves. Like you think about what goes into everything and it's, it's the social posts promoting survivor sticks. It's the collateral materials um, talking about it that are so cool looking that people want to participate. I think about these jerseys. We always have, you know, Imran, our Javed, our creative director was kind of hesitant, but we had him design the, the animal adoption jerseys this year and some parts in it. He did such a good job. So to, what a cool, I think it's so cool. Like that guy designed yeah. the Jersey that then someone else is going to be so cool and donate a thousand bucks more for these charities right. and then save dogs. Like what? it's awesome. So I think, yeah, it's a total team effort. And it goes, if the ticket people, aren't filling the building and building these relationships. It, it's just all such a thing. And we work really hard. I think we work unreasonably hard at this organization. The expectations are super high, but right. the, the rewards are, I mean, winning a cup is, it's a blast. Like it's yeah. awesome, but it's also right. just like the feel goods is like you finish a game. How'd your game go? What happened? Someone, this kid had a blast or, this yeah. went horribly, but you kind of have a beer or what have you. And just kind of, you bond, you bond so tight. You're so tight with these people that you work with. Like you've grown. I mean, I have grown up here. I say I was 10 when I started, but you know, I'm turning <laughs> 50 and it's just like, you know, I, I've been raised here more than half my life has been here. And Wendell, I think to go back to also to why it works so well is you have, an owner with Don and Wendell who has instilled in these players what this organization is about. So rarely have I ever gotten any pushback, but it's, this is how we do things. And I think also finding for the guys, what's important to you. If, Hey, you're great at reading. You want to do a, like you want to do, we did an ALS program with Chris Terry last year. So what's important to get them engaged. And they're right. very open to that. But I think Wendell has set the tone for that. And their participation, which is, you know, and it is, it's from, it's players to fans, to staff. And our, our staff is, I, I don't, there's not a better staff in this, this league or any league. Like the, there's people that have been here for over 10 years, like multiple, and it's, you know, 15 years probably. And it's those people to this core. And then they teach the, the young, the rookies, it's just like a team and, and they grow, but it's, we're very, very lucky, but we work very, very hard. Like we work very hard. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And like you said, going back to the players, I mean, everyone knows like, I know for Hurricanes fans, you're talking Steph Nason when he was there and won the, won the cup with the team. Jack Drury was won the same squad with him, Jalen Shaffield, Peter Kachekov too. It's like, yeah, and you see all these guys have come up to the Wolf system there in Carolina and you can see how being in Chicago has kind of helped them, be able to connect in a you know, way that you would never think of. So yeah, it's, I feel you definitely get that feeling of like, okay, these guys were in an organization that kind of preached more than just hockey. So that's really awesome to see the fact you kind of can see that from those guys. But um, honestly, this has been so much fun, Courtney. I've had a really good time talking to you. I mean, we could talk for another like two or three hours. I know, I love but... it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That just means we got to get you back on for a second done time. Done and done, yeah. Awesome. Well, before I let you go, where can people find you on socials and like, you know, all the cherries you have? The floor is yours. Wherever you need to promote, plug, all on you. 
Miss Courtney Mahoney, president. I love it. I love Chicago it. I'm Wolves. on, uh, yeah, Twitter at Mick1919. Mick was my former love of my life, my pup, my dog. So That's awesome. he continues to uh, be a big part of it. But yeah, I think we have right now, we're, we're kicking off uh, breast cancer awareness in October a little early. We're doing survivor sticks, which are really cool. They, for a silver lining foundation. And what we decided to do, we did this many years ago, and this is another thing our fans did such a good job of embracing is for $175, you get a stick from one of the players and that $175 covers the cost of a mammogram for someone who couldn't afford one. And there's all details on chicagowolves.com and That's on all awesome. our socials, but uh, that, and it definitely adopt the dog. Like we're, we got, we yeah. got a bonus one. We have a, a more I than that. yeah, like why? I, I mean, you can't wear jerseys and not have an adopted dog. Oh, dog I mean, no, night, yeah, so. yeah, no, I mean, come the on, the more the know. merrier. But <laughs> so everything's on there. I, you know, honestly, Zach, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about these programs. You can tell it's a huge passion for me. This whole organization is a big passion. So anytime we can shine light on, especially the community endeavors, it, it's really, really appreciated. Yeah, no, of course. Like I said, yeah, you know, just just in the short time been interacting with everyone, the you know, both Chris is you and Abby and everyone else. It's been so much fun, and I'm really looking forward to you know talking to you more as it gives you back on the show, and of course, get everyone, and of course, get everyone else on too, because I would love to talk to you know just pick Abby's brain on social media and then talk to you know Jason, talk to Chris on public relations and stuff like that. So yeah, this will we're because I know some people are like. How are you going to top the second one? Don't worry, we're bringing a. <laughs> it's not, we're we're bringing a. Like I Travis people. and Maggie, they got yeah. Me. <laughs> Tra Travis and Maggie are like, like, what are you going to do now? It's like, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to have a lot more uh, people coming out from the Chicago Wolves. We're not going to cap it off with two, but yes, yeah. Everyone was super excited, so that's I'm like, all right, I got to make sure we do this perfectly right. And that's cause... why this this organization is so cool to feel like you feel love. You just feel the love from yeah. from everywhere and. We appreciate. I think you know you try to do right by our fans, and they do right by us. And it's with that yeah. we 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 were unstoppable in the community, and hopefully on the ice. Yes, no, definitely for sure. But yeah, make sure to go check out Courtney and Mick nineteen nineteen on social scores. Go to ChicagoWolves.com website. There's a lot of great stuff over there too. All the fundraisers and charities and jerseys and all that stuff. I mean, AHL very. They do a good job with specialty jerseys. Make sure you check those out. I know I really love the mental health awareness jerseys. That's oh, they're something amazing. I'm, that's amazing. something I'm yeah, that's something I'm very passionate about because I, I deal with deal with mental health myself. But anything that teams do stuff like that, it makes me feel good that we're actually being seen as well. So I definitely love that aspect. But yeah, make sure to check her out on there. Check out the website. You can follow me to keep up with anything Hurricanes and Chicago Wolves this season. Yeah. It's a one true Zach on X. Uh, podcast is L underscore Hurricanes. I do have a link here in my bio to where you can check out my Hurricanes content along with my Chicago Wolves column. That will be starting very, very soon. I'm really excited to talk, dive back into the AHL again. And then there's links to check out my other podcasts, the Searchcast. For this show, there's a link to listen on all podcast platforms. Leave a five-star rating and review. If you do, I'll make sure to read on the show. YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know if you like the show. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss the show. You know, in the comment section, you know, just leave a "We love you, Courtney" in the comments for <laughs> our Madam President, and let me know what game are you looking forward to going to for this season at Allstate Arena because we want to know what initiatives and what kind of cool things you're looking forward to. But make sure to show Courtney some love in the comments. <laughs> uh, make sure to share with all their Caniacs and Wolves fans. Because we are over 906 subscribers. We are on the road to 1,000. And if we do at 1,000, I might just do something special for you guys. But I hope I hope everyone enjoys this Wednesday episode of Locked on Hurricanes or Locked on Chicago Wolves. Hope everyone enjoys their Wednesday. And until next time, as always, let's go Canes and let's go Chicago Wolves.